Hi everybody, for the last two and a half days I've been working on my gels trolleys for the vans. So in case you're not familiar with them, this trolley here is my standard usage or common usage gels for my large van. And in this other trolley here are my non-common usage, which are theatrical gels. And this trolley here is all of the gel stock for my small van package. So for the last uh, two and a half days, I've been stock taking all the pre-cut gels. So taking every single gel out, checking that it's good, um, throwing out the bad ones and replacing the missing ones and bad ones with fresh cut gel stock. So yeah, two and a half days work goes into that to make sure that when you ask for a gel on set, that I can put one on a light very, very quickly. Okay, so if you're setting up a gels box, what I'd suggest is very, very important is that you mark your gels up. Okay, so you know what every single gel is. That's very important. The next thing that's very important for, I think anyway, if you've got different size lights, is to make sure that you've got pre-cut different size gels. Okay, because you don't want to be trying to gel up a small light like this with a massive gel like that and stuffing around trying to hook it onto the barn doors and wasting time on set and looking like an amateur. The next thing that's very important is I think that you should have all your gels matching size, okay, or very close to matching size. And that's important when it comes to putting multiple gels on a light. So this light here, for example, you can see I've got two gels on it, but because the gel sheets are cut to roughly the same size, I can put the two gels on with just the, the one set of pegs. So for example, I don't have a gel coming over to here and having to use another peg to hold it on. Okay, and that makes things very, very quick and efficient. Now a couple of little tips while I'm here to help you uh, help your gel stock survive is put your diffusion, if you're using say a diffusion and a color gel, put your diffusion if you can closest to the light okay, and have the color gel behind or in front of the diffusion. The reason you want to do that is the color gels can bleach so the heat can take the color out of them. Uh, that doesn't happen with the diffusion gels, the white gels. So use the white gel closest to the light so it's acting like a bit of a heat shield and have the colored gel furthest from the light and that'll make your colored gels last longer. The other tip is, particularly with bigger lights, so not little things like this, say a 2000 watt light, have your small barn doors top and bottom. That allows the heat to come out, okay, as opposed to having, say, your barn doors like this where you're now trapping heat inside. Trapping heat will reduce the life of your um, of your gels and also uh, decrease, particularly in say something big like a blondie, you might be trapping heat in here and decreasing the life cycle of your globe because it's running too hot. Last tip when you cut your gels is to make sure that you've got plenty of overlap, okay? Lots of overlap. That'll trap any stray light that's coming out of any gaps in your barn doors. Okay, so that's a handy little tip. But also, you want that overlap so that when you roll your gels up, for example, when they're rolled up like this, the gels scuff on the outside over time because uh, the outsides, the edges, are always scuffing and rubbing against things. Now, on your lights, when you put the gels in the light, that scuffing will be here. It won't be on the section where the light transmits. Okay, so that's another tip for making sure that your gel stocks last a long time. Now, what's the best way to store gels? Because some people like to have individual sheets like this, and some people like to get um, get them bundled into the same type, okay? Because bundling them saves space. But having them like this, you can grab individual gels really quick and save some time. But as you can see, it takes up a massive amount of space. Well, as you've just seen, I do both. So my common usage gels, or gels I use all the time, I have them as single sheets. Gels I don't use very common, like my theatrical colours, I have bundled, okay? Now, what I found over the last 20 years is people aren't cracking the sads that it takes me a, a while to, to, to put gels on lights when they're bundled like this because I've got to individually pull every sheet off because with um, rarely used gel stock, they're actually quite happy that I've got it. You know, it's usually a surprise. They ask for a colour on a wall and I've got the gel, so they're not cracking it over that. Okay, now each gel, each gel sheet comes from a roll. Let's just go over here. So and currently these ones are still waiting to be cut down. So if you're using a lot of gels, don't buy sheets, buy rolls. Rolls are dramatically cheaper because a roll is four foot long, 
when you buy it, four foot long by 25, uh, sorry, four foot wide by 25 foot long. So that cuts a heck of a lot of sheets. So when you're down buying your gels and you have a look at the cost of a sheet, I'm not sure what a sheet is, and then you look at the cost of a gel roll, I'm telling you, these things, the gel rolls will save you a heap of money. Okay, so each one comes from a gel roll. There's uh, all of my gel rolls. So how do you manage your gel roll stock? What's the best way to keep track of uh, if you've got all your gels? Well, what I do is I make sure I've got two of each gel, at least two rolls of each gel. So one roll for cutting and the other roll as my spare. Now, as soon as I use my cut roll and as I have to open up my spare roll, I order another roll. That way I know I've always got at least one roll of each gel. These are the ones that I've cut to the, the last couple of days that um, I'm waiting on a second gel. I've had to order a second gel for them because I've used the one roll. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope I gave you some good tips. Um, see you on set.